This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. The my boy Conrad, he's such a cherub. He's such a beautiful boy. I bet when he was twelve, he was a dog. And my friend Tony Schiavone at Tony Schiavone twenty four on Twitter. I had, uh, as I mentioned, my friend Sean Creedle in Baltimore to help me out on Facebook. He does a great job, my buddy. So we got a lot of questions, and the one thing I mentioned earlier, this is from Ryan Globe, but he wanted to know essentially what I I, I hinted about earlier. Why didn't you come to WWE after WCW went out of business? Now, first of all, you're like me in the sense that if there's not a job there, you just don't walk in and say, well, I'm back. Right. And the right. other thing is, I don't know if people understand where you were mentally as it relates to the pro wrestling business at that point in time in your life. Right. Did that have anything yeah. to do with if WWE had offered you a gig at that time, would you have taken it? Yeah, you know, I probably would have, uh, but they didn't. And uh, I probably would have because, you know, I was making a good living, and I didn't know if I could. And, you know, basically, Jim, with the exception of doing a little bit of minor league baseball, wrestling was all I knew. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my business, so I, I I wouldn't have mind staying in it. But they didn't want me. And, and to be honest with you, I understood that. I really did. I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, you guys were in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Yeah, you, and I came to see you. Yeah, 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 and was was uh, wanted to talk to Vince and did, and talked to Kevin Dunn, and there was no interest in me, and you know I understood that because I didn't think my work was that good, and as it went along, I think it was probably the best for me that I left the business because I probably wouldn't have done good work for them because I was spent. I remember you and I talking out there in the back of the building. Right. Uh, shooting a breeze. And yeah. because I was instructed, and that probably is too heavy a word, it was suggested yeah. to me that you ought to go out and shoot the breeze with Tony because we didn't have real good news for him today type deal. Yeah. Well, I, they right. didn't, nobody went into the details, but I could kind of add, right. you know, okay, I get it. Tony didn't right. come to Fayetteville for the hell of it. Right. So uh, he was looking for our work, and, and they didn't apparently have it. So. Anyway, you know, yeah. I shot the breeze, and uh, that was then we didn't see each other for a long time. No, at all. Absolutely. I don't think we saw each other until, uh, hell, Jim, probably when 15, uh, another 15 years. Yeah, too long, man. We talked about yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. Too long. That don't yeah, make, you're right. That don't make any sense. If WWE did a, a one night stand for WCW, for the WCW brand, and let's say somehow they could book it and they made sense. And so much like the WWE did with ECW back in the day, if they did a WCW one night stand, could they convince you to come do one show? Oh uh, boy. Uh, yeah, they could. If it wasn't on a college football weekend, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, cause that's, uh, the university of Georgia is my number one job. And you really can't. But yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind coming back and and doing something. Uh, you know, remembering WCW. You know, they had me come up in uh, on the Monday Night Wars and do a couple of little uh, interviews for them uh, up in Stanford a couple of years back. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, Jim, I don't know, and and I know you've you've been calling some matches. You've you've stayed with it. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could still do it. Well, you know, I you. I stay in practice because. When I uh, left WWE and kind of started freelancing, I found plenty of opportunities, but, but the right opportunity to get back in the, the saddle and get your timing back was, was hard because it wasn't a lot right. of assistance. So I, I started doing the, uh, when Mauro Ranello left Access TV and went to WWE, uh, right. Access TV hired me to do their Friday night New Japan Pro Wrestling show, which I do uh -huh. now with Josh Barnett. So. And, you know, when you mentioned earlier about you and I call the clashes, especially those early ones, like a sporting uh -huh. event, big sports event, yeah. a big ball game feel. Right. That's right. how we work on Friday nights because that's yeah. exactly, listen to this, Adam Swift is one of the head honchos at Access TV. I think he's our chief legal guy. Okay. And he's a North Carolinian. He grew up on Jim Crockett Promotions. He grew up on you and he grew up on me and Bob Cottle, all these guys. So yeah. he likes, and, and Andrew Simon, who's in charge of their uh, call the combat sports in that network, 
they both are guys of the old school that like a sports presentation for their pro wrestling. Right. So that's what I get to work in. It's a cool deal well, for good. me. Yes, it's because yeah. you don't have to worry about what's trending. We don't promote any matches next week. We don't promote any live events. We don't promote any pay per views. Mm-hmm. We strictly stay on the match. And I you actually, put the people over. How about that? Yeah, huh? well, that's what we try to do. We try to do. Yeah, what a novel idea! It is. It's, right. it's fabulous, yeah. isn't it? Uh, so <laughs> anyway, it's a fun. It's a fun gig. The only advice I would give you if you came back and did a one one night stand type thing is make sure you got to to run through a match before you jump right back out there, just timing wise. Yeah. Seriously, it's it'll all come right back to you, but you don't want that first pass to be on the air. Yeah, you're right. You want that you're first right. pass well, to be only where you and your your brethren hear it, so to yeah. speak. Well, you know, there's there's another thing too, Jim, and, and I want to I want to bring up here, and I'm really sincere about this. I worked for Vince for a year. It was a great year, and uh, then I came back, and you know, you you know the whole story there. Yep. I, I get the impression, and I may be wrong, and this is just me freestyling here. I get the impression that, and Vince has never done anything to me that would make me think that this is true because when i went to fayetteville that time he was very nice to me Mm -hmm. but i get the impression that i have for some reason been blacklisted from the wwe really yeah and and i i don't know why i get that feeling i don't think they would ever call me back for any reason they called me back to do that one thing on the network recently uh and that was not even vince or kevin dunn that was that was somebody else. So I just recently, over when I lost my job WSB a couple years ago, I called and I wanted to see if I could get on as a producer because I love producing. I love producing almost as much as announcing. That's what you do for but Georgia, we, right? You produce. Right. That's exactly right. And But as we know, announcers make more than producers normally. So that's why announcing was where I made the money, but producing is what I loved. So I, I called... Uh, and I, uh, I got in touch with a, a number of people, including Mark Carano, and I said, Mark, I'd like to, to entertain coming back, but I want to be a producer. I'd love to produce for the network because I just like to go through, you know, old tapes, you know, old shows. Mm-hmm. That'd be just right up, right up my alley. He said, okay, uh, I'll get in touch with Vince and, and Kevin Dunn, and some of you back with you. Kevin Dunn called me back, and he said, we don't have any room for any more announcers. And I said, Kevin, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to be a producer. I didn't want to be an announcer. He said, well, we need producers. I'll be back in touch with you. And he never returned my call. So that made me think that either they're disorganized, which I know they're not, or they really didn't have any time for me. And so in answer to that question, I wouldn't mind doing something like that. I don't think I'd ever get a call from the WWE to do anything like that. So I may be wrong. But that's just a feeling I get. I bet you you'll be doing something, either a one-off or whatever, uh, on the network. Look, I, I didn't expect to be back there either. And, uh, you know, not only did I go back, uh, you know, seven days after my wife got killed, I was back under contract and calling the, the last match at WrestleMania. Yeah. So, well, you know, I, I was lucky. Uh, I was glad to get my jersey back. Hey, uh, Paul Phillips has a question here, a baseball question. I kind of like this. Uh, okay. how, how can we get Pete Rose into the Hall of Fame? Uh, I don't think Pete Rose is going to get into the Hall of Fame, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, I think he should be, uh, but uh, I don't think he will. Uh, but so I don't. I, I think that uh, that is uh, that's come to pass. Now, of course, there may be a new commissioner down the road, but you know, I, I think there's too much against him going into the Hall of Fame. Yes, uh, you know, but he he does he does okay. Hall of Fame weekend, you know, he'll he'll be in Cooperstown Hall of Fame weekend. He'll sign autographs and make more money there than anybody else. <laughs> hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a thirty-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money; it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.